My name is Ben Rabinowitz. I practice in Manhattan at the law offices of Gerg Erikonnesen, Stegman, Makoff, Bloom, and Rabinowitz. I'd like to talk to you about the use of low-risk, open-ended questions on cross-examination. Very often, lawyers tell you, and instructors tell you, lead, lead, lead on cross-examination. And it becomes a mantra that that's all we do is lead. While that's true, there are exceptions to every rule. And one of the things that becomes an exception is this. There are times when you can use a low-risk, open-ended question to gather a lot of power on your cross. So think of it this way. What is a low-risk, open-ended question? It's a question to which we already know the answer, but we don't want to ask the question by just leading. Take, for example, a case where we know that we've already done a medical search on an author, a doctor who we're going to cross-examine. Well, this author has never authored anything, so in fact, he's really not an author. Rather than asking the one question, isn't it true, sir, that you never authored one article in the field that you're now giving testimony in? The better question might be to work from specific to general and cross-examine using open-ended questions. So say, for example, we have a case where there's a low back injury involving the spine. And we know that that particular doctor has never, ever written on that subject. Instead of just asking the question, isn't it true that you've never written an article concerning spinal trauma? How about something like this? How many articles have you written concerning herniated discs at the level L5-S1? Answer, none. Make it a little bit more broad. Well, tell us, how many articles have you written concerning lumbar spine injuries? Answer, none. Make it broader still. How many articles have you written concerning spinal trauma? Answer, none. And then you can make it even broader still. How many articles in your life have you ever written concerning anything in the medical field? And the answer, of course, none. The point that I'm making is it's better to sometimes have the witness admit through an open-ended question that he has not done this, that he's not qualified in a specific area to offer this testimony rather than just leading your way through it.